All right, for those of you that need it still, I've got this unit circle video to show you the way that I do it. Uh, first, though, I want to do a little disclaimer. You should not learn this method unless you know where the unit circle values come from. You understand that it's constructed out of special right triangles. Uh, the reason why, I don't want you to just know a trick, um, but if you do understand where the unit circle comes from, then this will dramatically speed up your ability to calculate sine of 3 pi fourths or something like that. So that's my disclaimer. Now I'm going to show you how I do it. Uh, things you need to know. You have to know the pattern and the denominators of the radians. Uh, you have to know the radians on the axes, so 0, 2 pi, pi halves, 3 pi halves, and pi. You have to know where those are. You have to know which sine and cosine values are paired together. You have to know that sine is y, cosine is x, and then tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant all come from that, which we'll get to later in the video. Things that you're going to reason out afterwards. You're going to fit, you're going to reason where on the unit circle you are, so where that radian measure actually leaves you, the actual values of sine and cosine, and then you'll get the values of the other four trig functions from sine and cosine. All right, so let's start with the axes. The axes, uh, so over here we've got zero and we've got two pi. So zero means we've not gone anywhere. Two pi means we've completed a full circle. This one's going to be one half pi. This is 1 pi, and this is 3 halves pi. So you might notice that I write it a little differently. Uh, instead of pi halves, I write 1 half pi, or instead of 3 pi halves, I write 3 halves pi. Uh, that's because it makes the next step easier, figuring out the reasoning of where I am. So the next thing you need to know, you, so once you know that, you need to know that anytime you see something that's over 6, it's closer to the x-axis. Uh, a mnemonic that can help you remember that is x is in the word six um or if you can re if you really 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 know fractions you don't even need that so we've got the over sixes something over six something over six something over six those are all close to the x-axis then right in the middle is something over four something over four something over four and then that leaves the over threes to be close to the y-axis. So that's what I mean when I say the pattern, the, the denominator. So it goes 6, 4, 3, 3, 4, 6, around, all the way around. 6, 4, 3, 3, 4, 6. So we can see that going around. Um, I think it is easier to just remember the 6s are closer to the x-axis, the 4s are in the middle though. So we need to know that, we need to know the axes. So now that we've got that, let's actually go start trying to figure out where things are. Uh, every other angle or radian measure you just find through reasoning about the fraction. So remember, this is 0 and 2 pi. This is 1 half pi. This is 1 pi. And this is 3 halves pi. Okay, so let's go through and figure these out. Uh, I've got 5 pi 6, so I'm just going to think about the fraction 5 sixths. Okay, I know 5 sixths is a little bit less than 1. It's an over 6, so it's close to the x-axis. So 5 sixths is less than 1. That must be here. It's that radian measure. Let me move this over that way we can see it better. Something like that. That's where 5 pi 6 is. Uh, if I want 4 pi thirds, think about the fraction 4 thirds. Is it bigger than 1 or smaller than 1? 4 thirds is bigger than 1 because 3 thirds would be 1, so 4 thirds must be bigger. Now I just got to think, is it bigger than 3 halves or smaller than 3 halves? You can think about this a couple different ways. You can think about uh, finding, you could find a common denominator, compare the fractions that way, or you can just think about, um, could think about the fact that 4 thirds is 1 and a third, which should be less than 1 and a half. So it's going to be right there. If I want to do pi 6, just think about the fraction 1 sixth. Okay, well, one sixth is definitely less than one half, so I must be in quadrant one. And then seven pi fourths. Think about the fraction, seven fourths. Seven fourths is definitely bigger than one. It's bigger than one and a half, and in fact, it's almost two, right? So that should be right in the middle, right here. So I know that kind of goes by fast, but here, I'll, uh, do I have any here? Nope. Uh, let me give you a couple that you can try on your own. Let's give you 3 pi fourths. 
uh, 11 pi sixths and 5 pi thirds. Why don't you go through and find where those are on the unit circle and just Google the unit circle so you can check your answers. Okay, so once we can figure out where we are just through reasoning about the fractions, that's the first step in my method. Uh, now we need to think about the actual values because sine and cosine are the only values that are on the unit circle. And really, they're only five numbers. Uh, we've got zero and we've got one. We've got square root of two over two, which is paired with square root of two over two. And then we've got one half with square root of three over two. These right here are always on the axes. These are at the over fours. And these are at the over three answers, the over three radians and the over six radians. Um, so what I mean by pairing is if sine at a particular radian is zero, then cosine would have to be one there or negative one. If sine was root two over two, then so would cosine be. If sine was one half, then cosine would be root three over two. So those numbers are paired together. If sine is one of them, cosine is the other. So those are the only real numbers. It's just we have to think, is it plus or minus? It's the only additional thing we have to think about. Uh, let's go do one. Let's go through and do one. All right, so cosine is seven pi six. Uh, I'm gonna go through the whole method. Seven pi six, I need to think about where that is. I'm gonna draw this for myself. Okay, seven six, that's a little bit bigger than one. So it should be right here. So I'm gonna draw a triangle, it doesn't matter how you draw it. But I'm gonna recognize that vertical distance, that line I just drew, that is the y distance, right? Vertical is y. Then this whole length right here is the x length, okay? So which one of those is bigger? Well, visually I can see the x distance is bigger than the y distance, right? That x length of the triangle is bigger. So I want cosine. Do I want x or do I want y? Well, if you look back for a second, right here, cosine is the x value. So I want the x value here. I want the bigger x, the bigger value, right? Over six, the answer is either root three over two or one half. Okay, I want the bigger of these two. Now I know a lot of people end up getting this confused, but root three over two is the bigger number here, right? So I want root three over two. And since I went to the left and x is negative, x is gonna be negative, so it's negative root three over two. That's all there is to that. Figure out where you are by reasoning with the fraction then figure out which number you are because you know which numbers are paired together. Let's do another one. Sine of two pi thirds. So let's think about where two pi thirds is. Two thirds is smaller than one, but it's definitely bigger than one half. So it's gonna be up here. I'm gonna draw a triangle. That horizontal distance I drew, that's my x. That's my y, the vertical distance. This distance here is bigger than this distance, right? So I want the bigger number. Well, the bigger number is root three over two. Since I have a y value and I'm above the x-axis, should that be positive or negative? That should be positive. So there's my answer. I think I've got a couple more of these, so let's keep going. Uh, cosine of seven pi over four. Okay, the over four is, I already know the answer for cosine and sine, right? It's always root two over two because it's paired with itself at the over four. I just got to figure out, is it positive or negative? Well. Cosine of seven pi four, seven fourths, bigger than one, bigger than one and a half. It's over here. So in that quadrant, are x values positive or negative? I'm to the right of the y-axis, so that should be positive. All right, and I've got one more here. Uh, I believe one more, nope, two more. Okay, sine of pi. Well, let's figure out. We know where pi is, right? That's one of the axes ones. That's one we had to memorize. That's going to be right here. Okay, sine is the y value. Did I go up or down at all from the x-axis? No. So the answer has to be zero. Okay. I believe this one's the last one. Sine of five pi thirds. Okay, five thirds. Five thirds is bigger than one. Five thirds means one and two thirds, so that should be bigger than one and a half. So it should be right here. I can draw that better. Draw my triangle. 
This is the x distance because it's horizontal. This is the y distance because it's vertical. I'm at an over three, that means I want the bigger one, or that means uh, I want either root three over two or one half. Since I want y, that tells me I want y, I want the bigger value because I can see this distance is bigger than this distance, so it should be root three over two. Since I'm below the x-axis, it's negative because it's a y value. Okay, so pause the video right here. Here are six that you can try out on your own. I'm not gonna put the answers here. You can always Google them, uh, but there are six for you to try using my method. So figure out where you are using the fraction. And if you're at one of the over threes or the over sixes, draw yourself a triangle and figure out, do I want the bigger number or the smaller number? If you're at an over four, just figure out where you are and see if you're positive or negative. And if you're on an axis, just be careful. Uh, it, because if I go to the right, that should be positive one. If I go to the left, that should be negative one for cosine. Sine would be zero on the x-axis. And then similar idea for the vertical axis. Okay, so I'm gonna do a couple of the tangent, cotangent, secants, and cosine, cosecants. So tangent just means take sine and cosine and put them over each other. Do sine over cosine. Cotangent is just the opposite of that. You do cosine over sine. Secant, you find cosine and flip it. Cosecant, you find sine and flip it. So we'll see more of those examples, right? So cosecant, cosecant is seven pi six. Cosecant tells me to find sine and then flip it. So sine of seven pi six is what I have to find first. Okay, so where is seven pi six? Think about seven sixth. It's a little bit bigger than one, so it should be here. All right, this is y, this is x. Okay, the y value here is smaller, and sine is the y value, so I want the smaller number. It's one half. And it should be negative, because I'm below the x-axis. So that's sine of seven pi six. I take that and flip it. Now I have cosine, cosecant. That's all I have to do, find sine and flip it over. Secant of two pi thirds, let's find where two pi thirds is. Two pi thirds, two thirds is less than one, but bigger than one half, so it should be right here. Here's the x distance, here's the y distance. Secant is related to cosine, so I want cosine of two pi thirds so I can flip it afterwards. Okay, uh, cosine of two pi thirds is the x value, so I want the smaller number. I have an x value and I went to the left, so it's negative. So secant, you just take that and flip it over which is negative two over one, but that's just negative two, okay? Uh, cotangent is seven pi fourths. So that means I need to do cosine of seven pi fourths over sine of seven pi fourths. Uh, so I'm right down here, seven fourths is bigger than one and bigger than one and a half, which is three halves. Uh, cosine and sine are both root two over two here. Uh, cosine should be positive there. Sine should be negative because it's the y value. So it's a number over negative of itself. So that should be negative one. That's my answer. Okay, I've got cotangent of pi. Pi is right here. So I'm gonna do cosine of pi over sine of pi. Okay, well, cosine of pi, I'm, I've moved left. I'm on an axis, so my answer is either zero or one. Well, the x coordinate here is gonna be one, negative because I went to the left, negative one. The sine value, well, the sine value is y. I'm on the x-axis, I haven't gone up or down, so that's zero. Ah, I can't divide by zero, so the answer is undefined. Do one more, I think, yes, one more. Tangent of five pi thirds, so I need to find five pi thirds. Five thirds is bigger than one. Five thirds is the same as one and two thirds, which is bigger than one and a half. So it's right here. The y value, the x value. So tangent is sine of five pi thirds over cosine of five pi thirds.
Okay. Well, at five pi thirds, y is the bigger value. So that means it should be root three over two. Since it went below the x-axis, it's negative root three over two. Then that makes cosine the other one, which is one half, because that's the number it's paired with. And it's positive because I went to the right of the x-axis. So there it is. Now, you cannot leave this as a complex fraction though. So we're gonna do the keep change flip. This is negative root three over two times two over one. The twos cancel. My answer is negative root three. And that's it. That's how I do it. Uh, if anything, you felt like it went by too fast, you're always welcome to ask me questions, but I do hope that you come to this video first to at least give yourself a rough idea of my method. That way I can just fine tune and help you out that way. Uh, here are six problems for you to try. They're mixed up sines, cosines, cosecants, all that good stuff. So go ahead and pause the video right here. Try these problems out and use a calculator, check your answer or check the circle. Cool. Bye.